Hi, my name is Mackenzie Wally. I'm an Elon DPT student. I recently read an article titled The Combined Effect of Dynamic Splinting and Neuromuscular Electrical Stimulation in Reducing Wrist and Elbow Contractures in Six Children with Cerebral Palsy. I found this article in the Prosthetics and Orthotics International Journal from March 2010. So the level four study is a longitudinal single participant design. The target population was children uh, with cerebral palsy with upper extreme upper extremity contractures um, either in the wrist or the elbow. So they had six participants between the ages of 7 and 16 participate in the study. So the purpose was to investigate the feasibility of applying dynamic splinting and neuromuscular electrical stimulation to improve wrist and elbow function and range of motion in the target population. So the um, parameters they used in the NMES include asymmetric biphasic waveform, frequency of 40 hertz, pulse width of 330 microseconds, with a two second ramp up and two second ramp, ramp down time, um, also with a ratio of 10 seconds on to 10 seconds off. The intensity was um, increased to elicit contraction, but only to tolerance. So um, the study was for 12 weeks. Uh, the children wore dynamic splint for one hour per day in the second half of this, so the second 30 minutes, they also applied the NMES. Um, and for the placement of the electrodes, it depends on if they were targeting the wrist extensors or the elbow extensors. If they were targeting the wrist extensors, they would apply the ground electrode about an inch proximal to the wrist joint. And then the active electrode about an inch or two distal to the elbow joint along the wrist ex extensors. They're targeting the elbow extensors. They put the ground electrode about an inch or two above the elbow joint, and then um, the active electrode about three to four inches above that over the elbow extensors. So for the outcome measures, they looked at active range of motion, passive range of motion, and they used the Melbourne assessment of unilateral upper extremity function. They did not find any clinical significant functional improvements after the 12 weeks of this study. They found varied passive range of motion results with some of the participants increasing their passive range of motion, one decreasing and some staying the same. They did not find any clinically significant increases in active range of motion. They even found that one participant um, increased their active range of motion after follow-up after ending the treatment for a few months. So overall from this study, um, I concluded that I liked the feasibility of it. I liked the, that the patients could do this on their own at home. However, I don't think that the clinical findings were significant. I would like to see further studies on this topic also, maybe looking at different NMES parameters. Um, but overall, the results were too incon inconclusive and did not show any clinically significant functional improvements. So I would not recommend this treatment for this target population at this time.